Hey there, I'm Sanari Singh, a 3D animator in games and welcome back to my control rig series. In the last video, we had our hierarchy set up in the control rig blueprint. So in this video, we'll take a look at the three things that we can create in a rig hierarchy tab. That is controls, bones and spaces. So let's get started. So now there are three things that you can create in the rig hierarchy tab that is bone, control and spaces. First I'll go through and explain all these three options, basically why, when and how they can be used and later we'll use them in our control rig. So let's start with the first option that is a new bone. A new bone basically lets you add additional bones to the rig hierarchy. So to create a new bone you can just right click here and select new bone and you can see a new bone being added to the hierarchy. You can distinguish this with the help of this green colored icon assigned for it. Now these are not actual bones, so they are not part of the skeleton and it won't show up under your original bone hierarchy in the skeleton mesh editor. They won't even show in the outliner as attachment points unlike the usual bones if you want to attach something like a prop to it. Then what are these? These bones are just transform variables with a parent-child relationship. So they can be used to drive things like simulations, jiggles, etc. at runtime using their transform and their parent-child relationship. A new control is something that we are going to use the most and I hope all of us are already familiar with what they do. Don't worry if you're not, controls as the name suggests are just visual shapes which are used to control or manipulate the bones while animating any character. So to create a control, you can just right click here in the empty space on the rig hierarchy tab and select control under new. Or you can just use the keyboard shortcut control plus N to create a new control. This will create a controller at the origin which appears as an orange spear in the viewport. Now if you select your control in the tab or in the viewport and take a look at the details panel here on the right, there are a lot of options that you can change to define your own controls. First you can change the name of the control. Then there is control type which has a drop down with several options to define what kind of control is this or what kind of parameter it will handle for manipulation. So first one is bool which works like a switch as it has only two values which can either be true or false. So you can use this to toggle between states or parameters depending upon your condition. This is the only option which doesn't have a visual gizmo. I wish it had one to make the selection of control much easier and intuitive. Right now you can select it via the hierarchy tab. Next is float. This is useful when you want to define a range for your control like a minimum and a maximum value within which it can move and also an axis for the direction you want your range to be in. This option unlocks other tabs like limits and gizmo which I'll explain later. Then we have vector 2D which is similar to float but has an extra axis. So you can define a range in two directions and a primary axis for the control orientation. Then the next three are position, scale and rotator which is very self-explanatory as all of them are vector 3D. So it allows us to define control in all the three axes for each of the property we choose be it position, scale or rotation of the control. Next is transform which gives the maximum control where you can define location, rotation and scale in all the three directions. Last one is transform no scale as the name suggests. It is similar to transform but without the scale property. For every control type that we have selected, we have two more parameters that is initial and current values. So the property name is initial or current followed by the option selected and control type. Initial is the default value that you want your controllers to have. There are multiple ways to set an initial value for the control, so let's go through these methods. If you use the method shown earlier, which creates a control at the origin, then initial transform will be set to zero. Most of the times you want your control to align with the bone they are manipulating. To do that, you can select the control and move it or adjust its transform to match the target bone. You'll see the current transform changing as you change the transform in the viewport. To set that particular value to the initial transform, you can just right click on the control and select set initial transform from current. Or you can just move your control closer to the target bone and select set initial transform from closest bone. That'll snap the control to the nearest bone and set that as initial transform. 
to make it slightly quicker you can name your control something similar to the target bone so that when you search for that keyword they both show up in the search results and you can just select the bone and copy paste its transform onto your initial transform this method surely gives you a more accurate position but it's still quite a tedious method so let's move on to the other ones you can also go and select any existing control or space in the hierarchy and create a control which uses the selected object as the parent for newly created control. You'll see the control snap to the parent position with an initial value of 0 as it is always relative to the parent. You can now adjust it from here to match a target bone and this will move it with respect to the parent. Even for this method you need an existing parent and then adjustment takes some time. So let me tell you the best method that I used. This one is kind of my favorite as it is the quickest way. Just find the target bone you want to create a control for, hit control plus n and it will create a parent space for the control and set its initial transform in that bone space. Now make sure to move this out of here and place it in your control hierarchy otherwise there will be kind of a loop where the control is driving the bone and since it is a child of the bone so it is eventually driven by the bone itself. So that goes crazy. So you can just drag it out from the bone hierarchy like this. With that out of the way, let's get back to the details panel where we have our next property called animatable. It is a basic toggle to define whether this control can be animated in the sequence or not. So that was the last one in the control section. Let's move on to the next one which is limits. Under the limit section, we have limit toggle parameter which basically is the primary one in this section as it defines whether or not you want to set any limit on your control. That's why if this option is toggled off, then other options will be grayed out. Then there is draw limits, which is basically a good one for visualizing the range in the viewport defined under minimum and maximum values below. For example, if you just define a limit such as minus 20 to plus 20 in the minimum and max on the X and Y axis of the location parameter, then you can see a red rectangle around your control showing a visual indicator for the limit in those two axes. I've used this for the fist controls that are used in the introduction video. The last section for control is Gizmo. Gizmo is basically a visual representation of your control. So you can toggle its visibility if you switch it on and off using Gizmo enable parameter. Then there is Gizmo name which should be named as Gizmo shape to make more sense as it provides you with a lot of predefined shapes that you can choose for your control. The default one is named as Gizmo itself which is that orange sphere over there. Then there is Gizmo Transform which changes the location of the gizmo without affecting the actual control transform or the initial transform. So it's quite useful if you have an OCD for alignment. And finally there is Gizmo Color which defines the color you want for your control. New space is something cool if you know how to make proper use of it, of course. So we'll just create a temporary space just for the sake of understanding now. Unfortunately, there is no shortcut key for this one, so we'll have to go through the usual process. Let's create one and see what are the options that we have. So just right click here on the root control and select new space. Now you can see the space created with the name new space space. That's quite a funny name. I would prefer if they do the naming like the selected bone name followed by the suffix space, which makes more sense. So we'll just go ahead and do that by renaming it to pelvis space. Now as you have selected the pelvis space, you can see under the details panel that we have a few options. Just like controls, you can change the name and set your initial transform and local transform. Now you must have noticed that there is no visual representation to the space that we just created and there is no gizmo at all. All the spaces that you create, no matter how, it will show up like this. We can put a value on the initial transform, let's just say if we put 50 on the Z location, but we have no idea where exactly it is. So if you want to see exactly where your space is, then just right click on the space and select control space transform under interaction. Now you can see the gizmo appears 50 units above the root where it is supposed to be as we have set the z location of the initial transform for this space to be 50. Now if we manipulate the gizmo in the viewport, you can see the initial transform updating. This is now the new default transform for the space. If you compile your blueprint, you'll see the gizmo snap back to the origin or the root. Don't worry, your initial transform is intact if you look at the details panel. You can also verify the same if you go to control space transform like before. That is one way to set the initial transform. 
You can also snap it to a nearby bone transform if you right click and choose set initial transform from closest bone just like the controls. Since we now know how to create a space you might be thinking what is the exact purpose of this or why do we need a space after all. Also if you take a look at the existing control rig blueprint for the mannequin you must have noticed all these spaces denoted by the red icon and it is parented to almost each control in the hierarchy. This is kind of a best practice for have for the purpose it serves but not required for each each and every control in the hierarchy. So what is a space? If you're an animator like me or a rigger who works in Maya, a space would be an equivalent for an empty group. You can put your controls inside it to keep them independent of the constraints. So you can drive the empty group without the constraint and animate the control independently. If you're familiar with UE4, then consider this to be as an empty actor which can be used as a parent to a group of actors. So you can drive the empty actor with one logic that affects all the children and also you get additional control over the child actors for further manipulation. Similarly, if you parent one or more controls to a space, you can perform some kind of simulation on that space and it will affect the controls underneath. On top of it, you can add some additional movement using the controls. So space is nothing but intermediate transforms that you can use to organize and offset controls. Since I animate a lot of weapons as a gameplay animator, I'll give you an example of where you can use a space while handling a weapon animation. If you have a weapon attached to a control under space in the chest space, you can interpolate the position of the weapon space and make it follow a particular hand while animating. If you don't get it yet, then don't worry, I'll show you with an example in my upcoming videos. We now have a basic idea of what a new bone, control and space is and how and when can we use them. So if you found this helpful, please give this video a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions regarding this video. Also subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified each time I post a new video. With that being said, let's move on to the next one where I'll be going through various nodes or control units that we're going to use in our control rig. Until the next time, see ya!